What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another blender and box cutter tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out some of the most useful features within box cutter. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so box cutter, as a lot of you know, is one of the best, best hard surface tools available for blender for actually cutting into different objects. So you can use it in order to create holes or recesses or a lot of different things. Um, so in addition, there's also another tool from the same author called hard ops which is basically a hard surface modeling tool set we're gonna focus on box cutter in this video but just note that you can either get these separately which I will link to in the notes down below or you can get the bundle notice that they are on sale right now as a part of the uh, blender market Black Friday sale so if you don't see this video during that sale these are still great tools so um, definitely worth checking out so what we want to do is we want to jump over into blender all right so I will link to a video that it's a little more in depth on this. So I wanna focus specifically on the tips for this video. But if you want more of a step-by-step, -step, then I will link to that in the notes down below as well. But first tip is you can use the fine adjustment tool inside a box cutter in order to fine adjust the shape that's being created. And so you can do that by with the tool being active, you can hit the tab key. And so notice how when you hit the tab key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna make this so you can click and drag these little circles in here to do different things. So the first thing you can do is you can use this in order to set the actual location of the cutter. So you can adjust this up and down, left and right, other things like that. So you can do that with the tool active just by hitting that tab key. It's also going to give you control over the way that you can bevel this. Notice how you can click and drag in order to bevel this. You can also scroll your mouse wheel up and down in order to adjust how many segments are created in your bevels. So fine adjust mode can give you a lot of control over the cuts that you can make with your objects. All right, so the second tip is you can use the inset mode in order to create an inset along a corner. So instead of having cut mode selected, just click on inset right here and then click and drag. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to create an actual inset where this kind of pushes the whole thing down. It kind of insets it along the cut and you can adjust the strength of that by tapping the T key right here. You can also scale that while this tool is active um, along the different axes, other things like that. So you can use this in order to quickly create those insets on your surface. Notice again, inside of fine adjust mode like this, you can actually use fine adjust mode to adjust the size of this as well as the bevel. So notice how you can bevel off um, this cut right here. So there's multiple different ways that you can cut surfaces using box cutter. So for example, the cut mode right now is going to inference to an actual surface like this, right? It's gonna find your surface and then inference to that. But let's say you have a shape like a sphere. So if we were to add a sphere in here like this, and we tried to do that, then you're gonna get all sorts of like weird directions, right? It's not really gonna be able to look at this straight on. But what you can do is you can align the cut to your view just by going into your surface settings and then selecting this second option right here. And so we're gonna to go to a straight on view like this, but let's say that we wanted to create a cut into this sphere. Well, what this would do is this would allow us to set the cut to go through this object based on the view that we have right here. So instead of it trying to lock to a surface like this, which wasn't working very well, we can use our view in order to straight cut through something like this. And so let's say we have an object like this one where we want to create some symmetrical cuts. So let's say I wanted to come in here and cut out the corners of this object um, so that they were all kind of cut off. And so the hard way to do that would be to do this manually, right? To come in here and draw this, create your cut, and then try to like duplicate it over and over and over again. You're never really going to get that aligned properly or anything like that. But what we can do instead is there's an operation in here for mirror, and we're actually going to use a keyboard shortcut in order to activate this. But let's say that we have this box selected. We wanted to draw across this corner right here. Well, notice how in our list of keyboard shortcuts right here, there's an option for one, two, and three, which is gonna allow you to mirror your axis. So if I hit two, notice what this is gonna do is this is gonna mirror this along the red axis. If I hit one, it's gonna mirror it along the green axis. And if I hit three, it's also gonna mirror it along the Z axis. Well, what that does is that allows us to quickly add multiple cuts to an object like this, 
without having to go through and do one of them over and over again trying to get this whole thing to be symmetrical. And so let's say you wanted to create multiple different cuts on an object, so maybe something like this one right here, but you wanted to do that multiple times. So let's select our object right here and let's just say that we had an inset that we wanted to create along this back surface. So we're just going to create an inset, we're going to draw right here, and then we'll use the T key in order to set how deep our inset is. Right, so we've got our object kind of set. Well, now what we want to do is we want to tap the V key on our keyboard. So when we tap the V key on our keyboard, what that does is that takes us into array mode. And so array mode is going to allow us to create an array of cuts just like this. Notice how you can scroll your mouse up to adjust the number of cuts that are going to be in here. So you can scroll your mouse up as much as you want, um, but you can use this in order to quickly create multiple cuts in here. Notice if you did want to do this along a different axis, you can tap the X, Y, or Z keys in order to adjust this along those different axes. In this case, I want to do this along the X axis. But you can use this array in here in order to quickly create multiple cuts inside of your model. Then if I hit the enter key, you can see how this came in here and this created those multiple cuts. So in addition, you can also create arrays in a radial array, meaning around a circle. So you can do that just by doing the same thing where we're just going to create our shape right here. And we'll just put this into our object. But then if we tap the V key and then we tap it again, notice that's going to put us in radial array mode. So radial array mode is going to set this so that this actually arrays these in a circle. So again, you can scroll your mouse button up. Make sure that these aren't intersecting when you do this. So maybe a smaller rectangle would probably be a better fit. So let's say we were to do a smaller rectangle like this, and then tap the V key. You'll notice what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to create a radial array around that central point like this. And so we're going to go ahead and tap the E key to extrude this all the way through. You can see how you can use this in order to quickly array cuts in a circle inside a box cutter. All right, so sometimes you want to be a little bit more precise with what you're placing in here. Well, there's a tool in here that actually creates a grid that allows you to snap to different points. So the way that that works is right now, if we just had this selected and then we just drew a box across here, notice how we can't really snap to anything, right? However, if we were to come up here and turn on snap and also snap grid right here, you don't have to do snap grid, but you can. Well, notice how now if I hold the control key, I can actually snap to a grid inside of my model. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to more precisely place things like cuts inside of my model like this. So I can use this in order to find a central point really easy. So in addition, you could also turn that grid off and then hold the control key and you can snap to points in here. So for example, if I wanted to create something coming out of the center right here, I could click and drag off of that point in order to place this perfectly centered inside of our object. So you can use the snapping in order to precisely create cuts inside of your models. So I also want to talk a little bit about the beveling because as you know, beveled edges just look more realistic, right? So what we want to do is let's say that we were to create a cut right here into our scene. Well, right now this is just kind of a square cut, but what we can do is we can tap the B key in order to bevel this off. And so when we bevel this, notice how we can move our mouse in order to set how pronounced that bevel is like this. And so we can use this in order to bevel off our edges to make these objects look smoother. And notice how this doesn't just work for um, cuts. It's also going to work for things like insets. So if we were to inset on here, and again, we're just going to tap that control or we're going to hold that control key to inference into this. But notice how if I was to tap the B key in here, this is going to bevel off our object as well. So it's not just going to bevel our cuts, it's going to bevel other kinds of things um, like our insets inside of Blender as well. So you can see that right here. Um, it's just got a nice curve to it. And so in addition, if we were to undo that and then just add that in here again, so if I was to hold control, click and drag, and then create an inset like this, this would work with our cuts as well. Not only can you tap B in order to set a bevel along our object, you can also tap the Q key 
and what the Q key is going to do is it's going to bevel the underside of the shape. So notice how now I'm getting a curve not only on the back but also on the bottom here. So you can use this in order to bevel the entire thing inside your scene like this. So now if I hit the enter key, notice how I've got a nice bevel here and a nice bevel here. All right, and so sometimes you want a little bit more information about the modifiers that you've applied because you can have a bunch of them in here. And so I believe this is something that only works if hard ops is enabled, but if you tap the Q key and under operations, you go to the modifier scroll, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to roll your mouse button up and down and you can actually see what the individual modifiers are doing. So you can use this in order to pick these. And let's say for example, that I wanted to um, adjust this right, like this modifier right here, I could do a shift A in order to make it visible. I can also tap the A key to see what it's doing inside of my scene. So you can also adjust the order that these are in. So if I have this modifier in here, for example, and I hold the shift button and I scroll up, notice how that's gonna move up and down in the order over here. Now for this one, that's not gonna be that big of a deal because the order doesn't really matter because these don't intersect, but it is definitely something that you can use in order to make adjustments to the modifiers you already have in here. So you can also tab um, if you want a different way of looking at this right here. And so sometimes you don't necessarily want your uh, cuts to be completely square. So. Sometimes, for example, you just want these to go in on one side. Well, what you can do is you can create a cut like this and you can tap the W key. So if you tap the W key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a wedge. So the wedge is going to basically make the shape taper just like this. You can also scale this. So you can tap the S key and then tap X, Y, or Z in order to set how tall this is. And then you can click, but you can see how you can use this in order to quickly create a wedge inside of your scene instead of just a regular box. You can see how that's gonna give you a different kind of shape in case you wanna create different vents or other things like that. So leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite feature of Box Cutter is. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to more info about Box Cutter on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.